we're going to tie <coughs> Viverka's Mantis Shrimp. We start with a Tiemco 811S in a size, this is a size 8. The thread that we are using is an 8 dot white thread. Tie the thread in, or tan thread, excuse me. I tie the thread in, bring it back into the bend of the hook. Right above the bend, and then bring it back up to the eye again. Get a pair of bead chain eyes. We're going to figure figurate those on. I'll leave a little space, about an eye's length between the eyes, the chain eyes and the eye of the hook. Let me just figure eight it on. I like to cross wrap three times, cross wrap the other three times and keep going then I'll go underneath it completely in order to gather up all those wraps. And I'll also put a drop of, of CA on top of it also or super glow. I take the thread, cut the shank a little bit better now, and bring it back into where I stopped before. I'm going to take a piece of rabbit fur, usually in tan, it ends up being white, and I like it to be about as long as the uh, shank of the hook. Take about a half inch. These represent the feelers or mouthpieces of mouth feelers on this shrimp. You can see me, I'm taking out some of the under fur so that it'll stay on the hook to begin with and that you can tie it in. But those little, that under fur needs to come out of that little wad of uh, rabbit fur. And it's about, the length of it is about the length of the shank of the hook, as I said. Tie it in, bring it back to the eyes. If you need to, just trim it off. Now I'm going to take a bit of uh, two strands of crystal flash, and they're my little feelers. And they're just a touch longer than the, than the rabbit. You see that little knot? That's UV knot sense. I do that so it, uh, I don't lose the fibers, and it lasts longer. I use, get to use all of the fiber. If you ever notice that when you take a bundle of anything, you uh, have a tendency to, to to use up too much of it. This way I get to use all of that crystal flash at one time. Just put those fibers and make sure that they hang on both sides of the rabbit fur. Take now I've got a pair of mono eyes. I make mine out of 30 pound mono mainly because that's what I have. But you can do it with 10 pound or 20 pound or even up to 50 pound. Not a problem. And I bend it. I, uh, I melt it through a flame, coat it with a marker, and then coat it again with uh, UV resin. Tie it in, tie one in, and then tie the other side also. Like those babies to stick out there, big old bulbs. Trim the excess. Now I've got a piece of craft fur, and this is in tan, and I like it to be extended out past the bend, about two lengths, at least two lengths, maybe two and a half to three lengths of the shaft of the hook. So it goes out past, out past the feelers or out past the rabbit fur. Now I'm taking a bundle of it and I'm cleaning out that under fur again, and I'll use that under fur as as the uh, as the dubbing for my body. Tie it in, right in where I stopped or started tying in the uh, rabbit fur as well as the eyes and the feelers. Bring it to the back and I'll trim the craft fur right before the, the, uh, the uh, chain, chain, chain bead. And 
Now, I, I, you saw me combing out the uh, under fur. I'm going to use that as dubbing. Now, when I use the dubbing, I'm going to want to get a little bulk. But what you can see here right now is I'm going to take a pair of uh, rubber legs. And I, I just cut them in half. And what I'm going to do, they'll end up being the length of the fly to the front. You'll see in a second. But I tie them in and just wrap over the top of them. And then I'll split them when, they, when I come up to the front end of this. That way I know they're not going to come off at all. Now I'm going to take a pit, some of that um, under fur from the craft fur and I'm going to create a big old dubbing ball and what I'm doing I'm forcing those rubber legs to the front. Get a little wax on my fingers. The stuff doesn't go on and since I'm doing a big old wad usually when I dub I use very very little but in this case I'm trying to build up a a fat body or a thicker body so I take a gob of it and so you got to work with a little bit more and you make sure you get some wax on your fingers and we do three sets of legs so I'll dub, put a dubbing ball here lay down two more legs have some more dubbing again wrap down two leg, two legs again see that big old dubbing ball I'm trying to give my body a little bit of mass to it. Another pair of eggs, just legs, excuse me, rubber legs. I'm evening them up when I bring them up. And once again, bring them up to the front, right behind that previous stubbing ball. And I'll split them. Then a bit more dubbing again. Again, big old dubbing ball just to push those legs up so they angle in a V. So one more set of legs. Once again, tie them up, split them, and I'll do another dubbing ball and another dubbing rope, force those legs forward, and I'll crisscross through the chain bead. I make this rope, dubbing rope, just a little bit long because I'm going to crisscross over those eyes, those chain bead eyes. More dubbing. So I'll twist some more on. Crisscross through the chain bead eyes. And 
and then whip finish with two sets of three whip finishes. Trim off my thread. Now what I like to do then is to grab all six of my legs and then pull them so that they're about the length. They're as long out as the feelers go out on the shrimp. So I'll gather them up, pull them up to the front, and give them the length I think they should be. What it'll do is it'll stick out. It'll make the legs stick out more. See what I mean? That looks buggy. And also when it goes through the water, it gives it movement, which means uh, gives a little bit of life. I'm just uh, being fickle and placing my legs that they sit like. 